If you're having a hard time climbing this season, I got my top eight tips that will 100% help you win more games. This is the Coach Mills guarantee, so if you want some easy SR, let's just jump right into it. So the first tip I have for you, if you wanna climb and you want it to be extremely easy, if you're in the lower ranks, bronze, silver, gold, and plat, and you wanna get to diamond as quickly as possible, this is what you need to do. Find a duo and repeat a combo. Grav Dragon, Nano Blade, EMP Shatter. This is basically free wins all the way up to diamond. And I know what you're saying, hey, I've heard this before, I get a duo, I try to combo with them, we do it a couple of times, and we just don't win the game. Well, guess what? Don't just do it a couple times. Do it every single time. You should be trying to sync up and comboing with your duo partner 100% of the time. Whether you're a Hanzo that has Dragon and your Zarya only has 60%, wait for her. Whether you're a Genji that doesn't have Blade yet and your Arna already has Nano, wait for him. Combo it again and again. Every single team fight combo every single chance you get combo it i don't want one or two combos in a game i want 10 or 11 combos in a game you should be comboing each and every time and if you want to make it more successful this is the biggest mistake that people that try to combo ultimates do again and again what they do is they combo their ultimates when the fight is already lost they lose their main tank they lose a couple of people and then they combo their ultimate they try to nano blade 1v5 they try to grab dragon against six players the problem is a lot of the time, you're not going to kill enough people with your combo to turn the fight. Combos are very powerful, yes, and they can secure one to three kills, but they're not always game winning. So what you need to take from this is combo instantly. When you are about to enter a fight and you have your combo, combo when you have all six members of your team alive and healthy. Do it right off the bat. Be the first people to ult, kill the enemy quickly, guarantee the team fight, push the point. This means pushing up if you have to. This means ulting them the second you see them. Secure the kills, put it in the bag. Don't give your teammates an opportunity to get picked or feed. Do it instantly, combo more ultimates, and you'll climb straight to diamond. I'm serious about this, guys. This is the easiest tip, and I don't see it enough. Find a duo partner, combo ultimates, do it instantly. You will climb to diamond just like that. Now moving on to the second tip for the season, you need to play for your situation and not worry about things outside your control. Adapt. This is a big thing. I tell you to play aggressive on Ryan. I've made Ryan guides, I've made tips and tricks about Reinhardt, and I tell you to be aggressive. And every single time I put that in the video, people say, hey, I can't play aggressive. Every time I push up on Ryan, I die. Every time I push up on Ryan, I don't get heals. I get killed, whatever. Here's the thing. There's a proper way to play Ryan, and there's a way that is feasible in each and every game. If you push up aggressively, if you're taking the space you are supposed to be, not pinning across the map, but pushing up and taking space aggressively, and your supports are not healing you properly, your DPS aren't peeling for you properly, then you should be swapping off. There are certain ways that you can adapt to that playstyle, but if your team aren't helping you in a way that actually promotes the proper strategy that will get the win, then you should not be playing Ryan. As you rank up, as you climb, players around you will get better at enabling you. And then you can do the proper strategy. You can push up aggressively on Ryan, play correctly, and everything will work. But guess what? In any of my accounts, while I'm playing with some friends down in Diamond, or if I'm playing in Masters or Grandmaster, if I do not get the proper support, I will swap off to something else. Ham and Roadhog Monkey, I'll play a character that I know for a fact I can get more impact on without my team helping me at all. If they've proven to me and showed me that they won't help me, even if I play Ryan the proper way and take space in the way that I should be, and they're not helping me, I'm just gonna swap off. Play a character that can get solo impact. Play Hog and get flank kills. Play Monkey and dive a target, get primal ranges and boot people off the map. Play Hammond and just be this perma threat that needs no support at all. There are tons of things you could do instead of complaining about your teammates. And let me tell you something, this is a hard truth, but you do not deserve the good teammates that will support you until you can climb out of the rank that those players exist in. If you cannot swap to something that can solo carry yourself, then you do not deserve to play a Ryan and be aggressive and be pocketed like a Masters or a Grandmaster support would because you haven't demonstrated the ability to solo carry and get past those bad teammates. I hope this really makes sense for you, but it's really important and it's one of my biggest tips right now. If you wanna climb, adapt, switch it up. This also includes supports too. If you're a support and you're playing Ana, you're playing perfectly, you're sleeping a target, your targets are getting woken up, you're getting dealt by Doomfist over and over again, swap to something that won't get destroyed. Swap Swap to a more, swap to a brig, adapt to your situation, find a way to get impact no matter what your teammates are offering to the table because if they're not giving you what you need, you need to swap it up because you need to not get farmed, you need to find impact no matter what. Now, let's move on to tip number three and this is a big one, watch your death camps. 
If you're getting farmed by a Smurf, if you're getting farmed by literally anyone, Widowmaker, Doomfist, I don't care what, getting dove even, watch your kill cams. You get a lot of information from your kill cams. You get information of where did your enemy come from? What angles are they hiding? Where at cubbies are they rolling out from? How close to ultimate are they? There's a lot of different factors that you can get from watching the kill cams. A lot of different high level games, FPSs, they don't show kill cam. So the fact that we get to no kill cam and people don't abuse it, that's preposterous. You need to be taking every bit of information from your kill cams. If you can understand what they're doing, how they're setting up, you can learn from them. You can make a game plan to overcome it. You can also set up a really easy prediction. Let's say a Doomfish just keeps rolling over and over again from the same spot. You could easily switch to something like McCree, switch to something like Hawk, just hide and wait for him. He rolls in, you flash him, you kill him. He rolls in, you hook him, you kill him. He rolls in, you sleep dart him, and you kill him. I know I sound like a broken record here, but this is so important to understand because people will just get farmed throughout a whole game, they won't watch their kill cams, and then they'll be like, my teammates are the ones who failed me, when there are things that you could do. And I'm trying to help you climb here. I want you to climb, but you gotta watch your death cams. You gotta do tips one through three. These are so important for you to do. You'll guaranteed climb. I 100% guarantee it if you take these three things to heart. And the next thing that you should really take to heart is me telling you to go to gameweek.com. We're the best educational platform that you'll find anywhere. And if you didn't see that Game Leap ad coming, then you have to smash that like button and let me know in the comments down below. I'm gonna be trying to put in the Game Leap ad in a way that you can never see it coming going forward. And if I tricked you, you have to smash that like button. But if I don't, you can smash that dislike button. So it's a risky gamble, but let's see if it pays off. Now let's move on to tip number four. And this is a big one. There's a giant amount of information to learn from. I know in a lot of my videos, I barrage you with tons of tips. I know in a lot of my videos, I give you helpful advice. And I know that there's tons of videos out there and even streams, tons of advice, tons of things you can learn from at any given moment. Here's what you should really try to take from each and every day. It's easy to get overwhelmed. So what you should try to do is pick one thing, one tip, one thing that you didn't know before. Maybe it's the fact that there's different ways to dash with Genji that help you shuriken faster. Or maybe it's some specific nuanced trick with Sombra or some fact about Inspire, how you should keep Inspire up on break. Any single thing, try and learn the tip for your character or learn the playstyle, positional game sense, fundamental, whatever it is, incorporate it into your play. It's useless to know all this information if you never use it in an actual game and then move on to learn something else. If you just keep taking in information and never actually apply it to your game, it's completely useless. So take it step by step. If you get overwhelmed, dumb it down, learn things one step at a time, and try to incorporate things that you're learning in a game. Once you incorporate it a single time, it will be forever ingrained in your memory. If you know a single interaction and you do it one time in a game based on knowledge that you learned, you used your game sense and you applied it and it actually got value, that's a way that it becomes part of your knowledge forever and you'll be good to go after that. Now moving on to tip number five, this is a really important concept and I'm gonna try to do this really quickly but this is something that you should really learn. This is the four steps to learning a new hero. So if you wanna learn a new hero, listen up. There's four steps and you might've heard this before because this is true for just about anything you could learn. There's unconscious incompetence. You don't know what you don't know. There's conscious incompetence. You know what you don't know. That's probably most of the people here. You know that there's a lot of things you don't know. There's conscious competence, which is if you're actively thinking about it and trying to do things, you already mastered it, you're good at it. Now there's the last stage, which is unconscious competence, which is you're already good at something without having to think about it. So the thing that you need to understand here is making that transition from unconscious incompetence, you don't know what you don't know, become conscious incompetence. Look at your own VODs, figure out what you need to do about a character, learn about a character. That's the easiest way to become conscious incompetence. You need to know what you don't know first, you know what needed to work on. Then you become conscious confidence after you're watching all these guys, you're taking on this footage, you really are thinking about what the character does and when you're really thinking about it, you can perform and all this stuff. And then after that, you do that enough, there'll be aspects of that character that become unconscious competence. And that is where you're doing things without even thinking about it. You're reflecting right when the enemy is looking at you, you're wall climbing to cancel reflect, all these different things. And then if there's other aspects about your character that you don't know, you could go back to the drawing board, back to the unconscious unconscious incompetence, realize that that's a part of your kit, a part of your play style, go back to that drawing board, become unconscious competence and repeat the cycle. This is how you master things. You could take it step by step. This is an easy way to learn pretty much anything in the world, but I really want to apply it to Overwatch here because if you want to learn anything about a character, taking it in steps is the best way. And sometimes the first step of learning that you don't know what you don't know, and then trying to make steps to solve that is one of the biggest things that can help you in the future. Let's move on to tip number six, and this is never feel bad about going back to the drawing board. I know I just talked about it there in step five, but 
Sometimes you need to find a new sensitivity. Sometimes you want to switch complete roles. Sometimes you don't want to play Genji anymore and now you want to be a hit scan main or a support main or whatever. Don't feel bad about going back to the drawing board. At the end of the day, you want to do what feels natural to you. Maybe your sensitivity all of a sudden doesn't feel natural to you. Maybe you just switched up a mouse and things aren't that comfortable. Don't feel bad about going back to the drawing board. Sometimes we need to relearn some basics. Sometimes people will start getting good at the game, they start progressing, and there's fundamentals they leave at the wayside and they never actually learn them. That can be a really big thing that hurts you sometimes higher rank players even they miss some fundamentals that are important about the game and then it bites them from progressing later on so don't be afraid if you're really going to relearn a lot of the things you know about a character to try to start from the beginning work on your fundamentals and work back up from zero that can be a way to get through a rut that can be a way to get through a mental rut now let's move on to tip number seven and this is don't waste queue time queue time can be warm-up time that you could spend learning more about the game watching videos like this one, or simply just playing the game. I mean, honestly, play the game more. Try Hard Free For All is one of the biggest ones I would suggest. If you're gonna be playing Overwatch, it's best to be in the Overwatch mindset, whether you're learning something new and trying to apply it into your game, whether you're practicing your mechanics and you wanna hit more shots, there is time to be playing. And for the vast majority of people that play this game that are at a rank that they don't wanna be at, they wanna climb, you're not playing this game enough. So if you're watching nonstop reruns of David Dobrik's vlog again and again in your queue times, instead of actually focusing on Overwatch, you're really hurting your progress. I mean, there's a time and place. I think it's best to separate your minds when you're playing Overwatch, think Overwatch and do Overwatch related things. And when you're doing your leisure time, do that. But in queue time, right before you go into a game and right in between games, you should be doing Overwatch related things to help you get in the proper mindset, warm up all these factors. Now let's move on to the eighth and final tip. And this one's extremely important for you to understand is sometimes killing is better than peeling. I know that I've told you time and time again that peeling is really powerful. And this is something that is really hard for people to grasp, but it is important. I know that when you're an Ana, all you wanna do is for your whole team to peel you. But if your team is playing a dive or if your team is trying to make a play on the flank, as an Ana, what your job is, is to be as hard to kill as possible and stall the enemy for as long as possible for you so that your team can get something done. If a monkey and a doom both jump you, that means that two people are down on their team and you're down, of course, but you might get a little bit of heals on your allies. You might sleep one of them, nade yourself, and run away for just long enough to stall them out. You could easily be yelling, hey, help me peel, but maybe that McCree needs to be on the flank. Maybe your team is diving. They're trying to make a play, and sometimes it's your job to just be as hard to kill as possible. And then sometimes, as the McCree, you need to understand where... Sometimes you don't need appeal. Sometimes it is correct to make those proactive plays. And I talk a lot about making proactive plays as one of the best ways to climb because it actually puts the importance on the enemy to make a play to shut you down as opposed to you basically just being super passive when maybe your team aren't doing anything, maybe your tanks are engaging, things like that. So this is an important concept and I would love to break it down more for anyone who doesn't understand, but sometimes you need to understand, hey, I'm not gonna get peel here, but I can be as impactful as possible before I die. Or sometimes you need to understand, it's not realistic for me to go peel back for my Ana because she's so far away. Instead, let me roll in and flashbang this Ana. Let me try to shoot this Reinhardt down to the ground. And maybe these two kills will counteract my Ana getting dove. The two enemies are out of the fight right now. So I can really try to find impact while they're busy with my Ana. Because that's something that's really important because you can climb in all sorts of different ways. There's not one perfect strategy. So if you can get in the habit, the mindset of getting the most value out of whatever you're doing, whether it's being aggressive and for go peeling, peeling for your allies and getting some impact, or whether you're being dove yourself and you're doing as much as you possibly can to be as hard to kill as possible, even if you're getting no peel, that could be a good mindset to have. Because I can't tell you how many times at the high ranks, the grandmaster ranks, it's like two Anas, right? And a whole dive comp right? Both teams dive the opposing on us. Okay. <laughs> so both teams are trying to kill her. The team that can kill her the fastest and the honor that gets killed the fastest, of course, are the team that usually wins, right? If that Ana hits a sleep dart, she hits a nade, she kites to a mega, she positions in a way that's really hard for her to dive, then her team is going to execute the dive first. And maybe her team can then dive onto the enemy and she will basically, because she's harder to kill, because she makes it harder for the enemy to execute the dive, it will bring them more value. Anyways, if you want to know more about these concepts and you're having a hard time ranking up this season, definitely come check out GameLeap.com. We have in-depth Grandmaster VOD reviews, which is, in my opinion, the best way to rank up because you get to see firsthand the decision-making of top-tier players and apply it straight to your game. Anyways, I hope this guy has been extremely helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. That's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time.